sophomore from Freeman, Virginia, number 20, Wyatt Smith. At center, a 6'9 freshman from Bowie, Maryland, number 42, Ted Jeffries. At one guard, a 6'4 sophomore from Faison, North Carolina, number 10, Anthony Oliver. And the other guard, 6'1 junior from Stream Lake, New Jersey, number 22, John Cruddy. <laughs> Cavaliers are coached by Terry Holland. Terry Holland in his final season at Virginia. It's been seven years since one of his teams has been able to beat the Duke Blue Devils. We'll see if they can do it tonight here in Charlottesville. We'll tip it off at University Hall coming up in a moment. University Hall in Charlottesville sold out. The Cavaliers and the Duke Blue Devils ready to do battle. Our officials tonight, Lenny Wirtz, flanked by Frank Scagliata and Steve Gordon. Ala Abdulnabi and Bryant Stitt will get us underway. The 118th meeting between Duke and Virginia and the Blue Devils, as you see, have dominated over the course of the last seven years. Brad, it's interesting. In most of those games, Virginia's played pretty competitively, except for one or two stretches in the ball game. They really have to get consistent play throughout the ball game tonight. Well, they'll get a first chance offensively. Duke in man-to-man. -man. Duke's man-to-man -man against Virginia has always been able, it seems, to push them way out of the offense. Karate on top, guarded by Bobby Hurley. And you better believe that Kubek is going to give Brian Stith a lot of attention. Anderson almost came up with a steal on Oliver. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Crotty in with a penetration. Kicks it out. Oliver will take the jumper. And Leitner, the weak side rebound. Duke with those big guys inside is going to be hard for Virginia to compete on the board. Anderson got it in low. Abdelnabi put it in, and he's fouled. Abdelnabi had himself surrounded by four Virginia Cavaliers, but his power, you can see there, he just pushes Jeffries out of the way, collects the ball. There's four guys around him, but he gets it in the basket. Kenny Turner picks up the foul, his first, and Abdelnabi with a chance at a three-point play to start things off offensively for Duke. Abdelnabi really having a good year. You can see there the field goal percentage, the free throw percentage uses that strength inside very well. Virginia runs it up. Oliver waits for some help, gets it down low to Stiff. He's double teamed. Jeffries with a jumper. Well, that's a weapon that Virginia doesn't pull out of its arsenal too often. Jeffries from about the free throw line. Tied at two. A minute into this game in Charlottesville. Virginia matched up man to man as well. Out the lobby in close, little one hand hook won't go. Jeffries had a hand on it and lost it out of bounds. There's some awfully tough matchups, Brad, for Virginia in the man-to-man. -man. Duke is attaching, attacking the Abdul Nabi Jeffries matchup, but Kenny Turner at 6-6 is guarding 6-10 Christian Leitner. That's a tough one, too. Leitner outside can't get it. Jeffries high for this rebound, and this one he holds on to. Friday, Jeffries lost it. Abdul Nabi ahead to Hurley. He'll do it himself. Can't get it to go, but he's fouled. I think Jeffries was pretty surprised that that ball was thrown to him by Crotty right there. He didn't handle it very well. Jeffries, just a freshman. Oliver picks up the foul, his first, second team foul on Virginia. And Bobby Hurley at the free throw line, one of the top free throw shooters in the conference. Comes in number five, just over 80%. Fans are going to get on Bobby Hurley early. He misses, and now they'll really come to life. So Duke, the top free throw shooting team in the ACC, 0 for 2 here early. Bobby Hurley has his first point. That's a one-point Duke lead. Last time these two teams played, Bobby Hurley, John Crotty matchup was... Crotty with 30 points. Turner has to adjust the shot. Leitner got a piece of it from behind. Abdelnabi will pull it off for the Blue Devil. A tough matchup on both ends of the court for Kenny Turner. Hurley all the way in, on his own, and a whistle and a foul underneath. Foul 
is going to be against Jeffries. He's really working hard on the boards, but he picked up the foul, just climbed right up the back of Christian Leitner. 6'9", 248-pound freshman. So three team fouls on Virginia. Hurley will inbound on the baseline. Anthony Oliver, Phil Henderson matchup is also an interesting one. Kubak who just checked in, missed the jumper, and Abdel Nabi, I think, is going to get caught for an elbow underneath. Abdel Nabi, very physical inside. Mike Susevsky taking a look at the scoreboard clock. When, we, when we're talking about Henderson, he's Duke's leading scorer, but Anthony Oliver for Virginia has done an excellent job against the opposition leading scorer all year. I don't think Henderson's touched the ball for Duke yet, and Stiss only had it in his hands once. Kubek's a pretty intense guy on the defensive end. He's on stiff, down low. Oliver got around Henderson. Can't get the jumper. Stiff, good offensive rebound. And he's fouled before he goes up with it. You know, Brian Stiff is really an amazing player. And his size, which is about six feet six, he's all over the offensive boards. I think sometimes you could just not guard him in the offense, but make sure you block him out. Kubek's trying, Stiff. With a nice little move there, Sheds Kubek, then Leitner's going to get the foul. But Stiff is just great on the offensive boards in terms of getting position, and then he jumps very well, has surprising strength. Led Virginia in offensive rebounds last year as the ACC Rookie of the Year, so he knows how to crash the boards on offense. Virginia still with a chance to take the lead. Stiff with Kubek all over. Boy, that's good defense. Sure is. Ronnie back on top. Woolworth on Hurley. Takes him in the lane and a blocking foul on Hurley. That's a nice job by Crotty. I think Crotty feels comfortable with his ability to maneuver against Hurley. You can see Crotty with the dribble. Hurley sort of gets his feet planted and can't get him moving again. Hurley's teammates have to come and give him help, force Crotty to pick up that ball before he penetrates into the gap. 17-15 to go first half. Duke in front, 3-2. Turner outside. Kenny Turner's averaged almost 15 points a game over the last 10 games. Inside. They're stiff again. Stiff on the offensive boards. Can't get the shot to go. And Leitner will pull it off for Duke. Terry Holland thinks that should have been a foul. Works the officials a little bit. Shoved by Turner in the way, no doubt about that one. It'll be Turner second. You get a look at Kenny Turner there, and as we mentioned, he's been a very valuable cog in the Virginia offensive attack, but he's got a real tough job trying to guard Christian Leitner. That's a tough task for anybody. The sophomore Leitner has really come on, and here comes Matt Blunden in the lineup. I didn't recognize him before Fresh the game. Fresh from a trip to Chris Corciani's <laughs> barber right, right there. <laughs> Half his teammates didn't know it was Blunden. Henderson drives in off the glass, got it to go. Now well, they'll know Blunden as soon as he fouls somebody. <laughs> so Duke with their biggest lead. Ricky in the ball game for the Blue Devils, along with Palmer. Here's Blunden. Henderson on Crotty now. Crotty leads it in for Blunden, and he goes up and scores. Boy, what a great pass by Crotty. But the thing is, Brad, that's a great pass, but if Duke is going to make everything that difficult, then Virginia's going to have its hands full all night. Good point. They had to work for it like crazy to get four points. And we're four minutes into the game. Ricky tried to get it to Palmer, stolen by Stitt, ahead to Oliver on the run. Crosses the paint, does it himself, misses the shot, but he's fouled. Now, Virginia can play a little defense itself. We talked about how Virginia's only got four points, Duke only with five, both teams really going after one another. Duke does a nice job getting back on the fast break, but there's Crotty again. You can just see that he's confident against Hurley. Bricky gets called for the block. Crotty doing a nice job slashing inside. And Bricky, who up until Sunday had missed eight games, injured his knee in the first Virginia game back on January 6th. And I bet that foul he just picked up probably did more to prove that his leg might be sound than anything else he's done so far. Crotty let him have it pretty good. Neither team ripping the nets at the free throw line so far. And these are two excellent free-throw shooting teams. 
back to the two best in the conference, and it's not showing so far. Virginia these, will get another chance. These two teams play one another so hard and so physically that they tend to make one another look bad, and Stiff hits that one. Stiff with his first points. And Virginia edges out the front. Cavaliers first lead. Henderson backs in, takes the jumper, partially blocked by Oliver. Here comes Stiff, and he'll slow things down. You know, we talked about his defensive ability. He showed you right there, Oliver, with a fine play. Crowley's going to drive on Hurley again. London back up with it. He's fouled by Palmer. Obviously, the game plan for Virginia, at least for John Crotty, is to take the ball right at Bobby Hurley. Once again, he goes right by Hurley. You can see there the Duke defense not really helping out. Crotty misses the shot, but there's Matt Blunden. He shoves Crawford Palmer out of the way and gets the rebound. Fourth offensive rebound for Virginia. Duke without an offensive board so far in the first almost five minutes of the basketball game. And that's really surprising. Virginia is much smaller than Duke. On the inside, here's Terry Kirby. If nothing else, pitching the ball on the sweep. We'll talk about Kirby, the football player, as we go. But he's starting to become more and more involved with the basketball program now. Well, I'll tell you, games between these two teams, you need a couple of football players <laughs> in there. And that's exactly what Virginia's got, Blunden and Kirby. The backup quarterbacks at the line, Blunden. Yes, and Matt hits the first. You know, if he had that hairstyle playing football, he'd like get helmet burns. They'd have to put a little more air in the helmet or something. Matt Blunden about to... Uh, go over his season average if he hits this free throw. This one goes out on him. Virginia with their biggest lead, 7-5. Early at the point to Bricky. Bricky's going to drive. He made him change his shot. Big pile up in the lane. Brian Stiff did a nice job moving his feet to cut off Bricky at the baseline, and then Matt Blunden blocked the shot. I thought Bricky has a lane here, but watch Stiff move his feet, cut him off right there. Nice job. Blunden comes over, helps out. Stiff is going to get the foul. 14.58 to go in the first half. Virginia at home on top by two. We'll be back after these words from our good friends at Budweiser. The three teams the Duke Blue Devils have lost to this year. And there's no shame in any of those losses, Dan. No, certainly not. They really got their doors blown off against North Carolina. But that was a game where Phil Henderson got in very quick foul trouble for Mike Krzyzewski's Blue Devils. Duke really lost their best outside threat. And North Carolina ran them out of the ballpark. Mike Krzyzewski in his 10th season at Duke. And his club off to its best conference start at 7-1. Coming into this one against Virginia. You know, they've got such great tradition at Duke with seven more wins. Mike Krzyzewski becomes the all-time winningest coach at that school. He would pass Eddie Cameron, and that, and that will happen. Crotty with a three-on-two, trying to leave it for Stiff. Great play by Hurley. The other way, it's Kubek, and he's fouled by Daniel going up. Neither team gets anything easy in this game. Hurley doing a nice job anticipating the pass, really really fakes Crotty out. I think Crotty anticipated he's going the other way, but shoot, if you've got Stiff on the wing there, I go cover him too. Hurley does, gets it down. Now Daniel's going to come in here and really pop Kubek. Bobby Hurley, 34 steals on the season. Shifty freshman out of New Jersey. So Kubek at the free throw line. Duke's only one of three from the line, and they come in as the top free throw shooting team in the conference. And they're still having trouble. Duke coming into the ball game, 77% per, from the line as a team. Virginia at 75%. Both teams are one for four. Kubak hits the second, his first point. Still Virginia for the one-point lead. Brad Nessler and Dan Bonner with you at University Hall in Charlottesville. Gary Kirby touches it for the first time. Takes it it off for Daniel. Stiff now over Kubek. He's fouled by Kubek. He'll shoot two. Brian Stiff's big offensive games, Brad, have included an incredible number of free throws. Stiff 
in the last game against Marquette, the Virginia win, he was 11 of 14 from the free throw line. Against Wake Forest, he was 17 of 18 from the free throw line. At 17 free throws against Virginia Tech, 14 against Georgia Tech, Terry Kirby takes a seat on the bench. If you're guarding Brian Stith, it's an awfully difficult task, but you have to try to not foul the guy. There's what we've been talking about, how these two teams are so proficient from the line. And then Brian Stith, who at one stretch had 34 straight this year without a miss, he just clanged one off the back of the iron. So <laughs> it doesn't matter who's at the line tonight. doesn't seem to be paying off. And he missed both. That's a rarity. Duke with a chance to lead if they score. Kubek will try it. Battles for the rebound, and Oliver comes out of there with it, and he's fouled by Kubek, who picks up a couple quick ones. These two teams really do play physical ball games, and I think the officials are calling it sort of close here at the start of the ball game, just knowing what kind of games these folks usually have. Leitner gathers the Blue Devils around Ricky Henderson. How often do both teams get to the bonus when you have 13 points total scored? 14.09 to go in the half. There's been as many points scored in this game as we have fouls. <laughs> exactly. There's been as many fouls as points. Duke has seven fouls, Virginia has six. The points are exactly the opposite. And the points aren't going to increase until somebody starts to hit from the free throw line. Oliver, this will be his first trip to the what line. What do you figure? First one to 50 fouls or no players win? And he missed one. And Alvin Abbott clears it off. This is incredible. Virginia one out of seven from the line. You don't usually win games against number four teams in the country by missing a lot of free throws. London now picks up a foul. Abdul Nabi had it out high and gave it right back to Leitner, the man he got the pass from. So Blunden will pick up the foul. And we'll see one of the top free throw shooters. Here we go again, right? You know, the amazing thing about Duke, Brad, you're talking about their free throw percentage, but I find just as incredible the fact that they as a team have been to the free throw line more than a hundred times more than any other team in the league. They pound that ball inside and draw the fouls. When you attack, you get fouled. And the number one free throw shooter in the conference shows everybody how. That's Leitner's first point. Shooting over 86% from the free throw line. It was interesting. Mike Krzyzewski was talking about Phil Henderson. He was quoted as saying about Henderson that Henderson is really attacking well. And that tells you something about his philosophy. They attack you on offense. They attack you on defense. And if you're going to attack on offense, you're going to draw a lot of fouls. Low scoring game. Duke edges back in front by a point, 8-7. Under the 14-minute mark, Turner double-team down low. Going to go up with it. He had nowhere else to go, I guess. Leitner will pull down the rebound. That's great defense. Henderson works one-on-one -on -one with Oliver all the way on the baseline. Leitner, the offensive board, and got it back up in there. That's amazing that that ball went in the basket. He got bumped hard. Lakers first field goal. He's got four points and Duke back to a three-point lead. Kenny Turner alone outside. Doesn't take it. Ricky did a nice job to get out and cover up that three-point shot. Body looks for Blunden. Tried to hand it to him. Almost had it stolen by Ricky. And it is going to be a Virginia turnover. Brad, I think that play sort of sums up the kind of pressure that Duke can apply. Virginia turns the ball over with their backs to the basket deep in the corner. There, they're having a tough time getting the ball in offensive scoring position. They've done a nice job defensively of their own, though, and still only trail by three. Their defense is what's keeping them in the ball game, but they've got to get some offensive production. There's the lob underneath the Abdel Nabi, and he's going to be called for pushing off on Jeffries. That's Abdel Nabi's second. Jeffrey's trying to play in front of Abdul Nabi. You can see all of there just right there. He shoves off ever so slightly with that left hand. So Abdul Nabi will sit out with two, and Jeffries goes to the free throw line. Brian Davis, Thomas Hill in the ball game. So in terms of size, with the exception of Leitner, Virginia now matches up size-wise pretty well. I'll tell you what, number 25, Thomas Hill, really came on strong when Robert Brickey was hurt. We saw him in that game against North Carolina really come into his own. Had a great second half, despite the fact Duke played 
not Duke basketball against North Carolina. And then their, in their next ball game against Wake Forest, he did a great job. Jeffries with his third point of the game. And it has not been much to talk about so far from the free throw line tonight. Jeffries can cut it to a one-point Duke lead, 12-49, to go in the first half. Leitner with another rebound. He's got five. Anderson guarded by Turner. He's going to put it up from long range. Davis got the rebound. An offensive foul called against Davis. That's a break for Virginia. Crotty fails to block out against Davis. Christian Leitner now talking to Lenny Wirtz. All kinds of congestion under the basket. Good battle under there. London, I guess, had him blocked out, but the ball bounces too far away. Davis called for that little hook moving around Blunden. People really laying bodies on one another underneath the basket. London, the backup quarterback, thought he had an in-the-grasp call there. Team fouls, you see them. Both teams in the bonus, neither taking advantage of it. And Virginia with a chance to tie things up at 10 if they can score. Virginia's had all kinds of trouble from the field, though, 30% so far. That new defense will not give in. Stitt's trying to get free, and Hill's all over him underneath. There's some really interesting matchups going on now. Crotty's going to get a foul, an offensive foul against Crotty. Hurley moving his feet very well. I think both these teams getting a little bit frustrated right now with the lack of being able to do anything offensively. Well, you can certainly understand that. Here, Crotty's going to try to take him to the baseline. Hurley moves his feet. Crotty drops that shoulder in. Well, Dan, we played eight minutes. We have six field goals. <laughs> Jeffries with a steal. This is my kind of game. Lots of fouls, lots of turnovers, <laughs> poor shooting. Turner in close. Did he walk with it? He did. Third turnover against Virginia, so they blow another opportunity to tie things up. 10-8. Duke out in front with 11.51 to go in the first half. During halftime, we'll have the Mazda game summary. A look at first half action here in Charlottesville. Duke with a two-point lead, 10-8 here in Charlottesville. Brad Nessler and Dan Bonner with you. Welcome back to Charlottesville, everybody. Well, partner, we got six field goals, and we've played uh, almost nine minutes of this basketball game. That's like I told you, Brad. This is the kind of game that I would have been very comfortable in. Duke shooting 23%, <laughs> Virginia 30. Uh, Virginia with uh, five turnovers, Duke with four. Duke with nine fouls, Virginia with eight. Lots of fouls, lots of turnovers, very poor shooting. And, of course, when there's lots of fouls back in your heyday in this very building, that gave you the opportunity to play even more, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Dan Bonner, who was one time captain of the Virginia Cavaliers in his heyday here. Yeah, and I was responsible for a lot of that man's gray hair. I'm afraid. <laughs> Lenny Wirtz has straightened everything out over at the scorer's table. Harry Holland's still not happy. But the equipment people have to be the ones who are most worried about the game tonight. These rims have taken a beating. Early lays one up there, and Turner will pull down the rebound. Maybe they're using one of those big balls, you know, the kind of things they use to practice shooting. Yeah, the student body had the beach balls out here behind us before the game. Wilson had a foul underneath and a call it on Henderson. And I think this is going to make the Virginia coaches mad again because I think they called that foul on the court rather than in the shot. So it's going to be a one and one opportunity. So Stiff will go to the free throw line where he is 0 for 2 after we built him up so big about his free throw prowess. Dan mentioned 17 out of 18 against Wake Forest and perfect 14 out of 14 against Georgia Tech from the free throw line. And he still can't find it. Can he? He's missed three in a row. You know, when you lose to a team 16 times in a row, you get to think that it's always something. Tonight, Virginia playing real well defensively. He forces Duke into under 25% shooting, but they can't make any free throws, and so they trail in the game. Early, nice pass in to Leitner, and he's fouled from behind by Jeffries. It'll be Jeffries second. When he just clubbed it. There was nothing. There was no subtlety about that. The ball came in. Jeffries just batted it. It's kind of the way all the fouls have been tonight. <laughs> You're going to pay for everything you do, I guess. There's certainly no finesse out here. 
Some substitutions. Daniel comes back in. Jeffries will sit down with those two fouls. So Virginia has Daniel, Stith, Turner, Crotty, and Oliver. And Duke with Bricky, Abulavi, Leitner, Henderson, and Hurley. And Leitner at the free throw line where he's been the only one that's done what he's supposed to do from the stripe. He's two for two. Three for three now. Everybody else in this ball game. Virginia and Duke together is four of 15 from the line. Leitner's three of three. Virginia trails by three. They're two of 10 from the free throw line. You see the stats on Leitner, number one in free throw shooting, number two in rebounding. And he's perfect from the stripe. He has six points. And this is Duke's biggest lead, 12-8. Virginia really needs some offense. And unfortunately, Duke has been giving them some opportunities from the line to have a converted. Turner for three. That helps the call. Well, if you can't hit from behind the 15-foot line, go behind the three-point line. Fire those babies up from 20. And cuts it to a one-point lead at a lead. They got the fans back in it. Ricky, he'll take it from long range. Turner clears it off for the Cavaliers with a chance to lead. Crowdy, the long lead for Oliver. He made a nice catch, but he tried to save it, threw it away. Tough pass by Crotty. Duke doing a nice job getting back on defense. I think that's a pass, though, that you have to make. You've got to try to be aggressive. Ball just a little too far for Oliver to handle. That's six turnovers now against Terry Holland's club. So Duke maintains a one-point lead. We're almost at the midway point of the first half of this one, and it's only 12 to 11, Duke. Virginia continues to do a fine job on the boards, both boards. Crotty got it into Skip. He's fouled by Lincoln from behind. Now they continue to get it into Stiff. That's two fouls on Leitner. Stiff eventually is going to start converting from the free throw line. And that's, Virginia has been attacking very well inside. We talked about when you attack, you draw fouls. That's what Virginia has been doing. They simply haven't been able to convert the free throws. And that will sit Leitner down with two fouls as Mike Krzyzewski with 10-13 to go in the first half. Doesn't want Leitner to pick up a quick third. Abdul Nabi's got two as well. And so again, it's a smaller lineup as Kudak comes back in. And Stiff goes to the free throw line. Where he came in shooting 84%, and that percentage is going to start to dip if he doesn't start to connect. He's 0 for 3 from the line. There, he's got that one. It's his third point of the night. And it ties the game at 12. Nobody's guarding you. You're only standing 15 feet away, but you start missing those babies, and your confidence flies right out the window. You can hear a pin drop in this place when Virginia goes to the line. He's got two straight, and Virginia with the lead, 13-12. Five straight Cavalier points. Henderson, down low to Abdelnavi. Virginia really packed in the lane. Henderson trying to leave it for Bricky. And Bricky made the catch on the baseline and scored. Virginia claiming that was a violation because the ball went up through the net. Might have had a point there. I don't really know whether it actually went up through the net or just brushed off the net. Stiff, great pass over to Turner. He finally gets the handle but misses in close. Oliver, he got it. Be careful when you shoot the ball. You never know who you're going to come down on top of. There's bodies everywhere in there. A lot of Duke players who had hit the deck just kind of stood around as Oliver put it off the glass for his first basket, and Virginia back to a one-point lead. Mike Krzyzewski insisting that there was an offensive foul in there. Boy, Mike Krzyzewski's got one of the best glares in basketball. <laughs> and he's letting Lenny Words have it all the way up court. Early drives in. And he's fouled by Daniel. Daniel and Smith did not do a good job defensing the screen. Early recognizing, taking it all the way to the basket. If you're Daniel, you have to do a better job stepping out on the screen. You see, he doesn't step up on Hurley. Hurley's able to get the lane to the basket, and then Daniel just not fast enough to cut him off. Hurley's drives haven't been pieces of artwork, that's for sure, but he does get a trip to the free throw line where he's one out of two so far tonight. He is not the artist out on the basketball court that, say, a Kenny Anderson does. He's right. just a tough kid who goes out, does a heck of a job for the Duke Blue Devils. London comes back in. Jeff Daniel will sit down with two fouls. Bobby Hurley 
who played for his dad, Bob, at St. Anthony's in Jersey City last year and led his team to a, a perfect record in the national championship. Somehow you picture Mike Krzyzewski playing guard in much the same style as Hurley. Probably, though, since Mike is at West Point, he may have had hair maybe shorter <laughs> than Hurley's. Hurley's hit his last two from the line, make it three in a row. His three points puts Duke back in front. We approach the nine-minute mark. But more interestingly, we've got now a whole lot more points than fouls in the game, so we're up, we're up on the plus side there. We were worried about that for a while. London. Brody has not scored yet tonight. He had 30 the first time. His two teams met. Oliver, this is the layup. That's going to be basket interference. Robert Bricky tapped the ball while it was on the ring. Mike Krzyzewski really doesn't believe that. Here comes Hurley on the run. Wanted to get it to Abelnabi. Coming back on top to Bricky. Notice Stiff playing way off Robert Bricky, trying to help out inside. Double team on Abelnabi. Goes up with it anyway. Stiff perfectly timed the jump for that rebound, his fifth of the night. Oh, you got to be kidding me, Matt Blunden on the break from the corner. That must be a new wrinkle they've put in the offense here. Virginia's biggest lead, they're up by three. Not a good shot, but it goes. And if it goes, it's a good shot. Eight minutes to play in the half. Virginia 19, Duke 18. It may not be a good shot, but it's two points. That's really a tough move by Hurley. He's taking it right at John Crotty. Crotty did that to Hurley early in the ball game. Virginia now with a 1-4 set. Crotty doesn't get the shooter's roll, and Henderson clears it off. Hurley, lot for Bricky. Too far, too deep. Bricky can't quite handle it. Really a nice job by Oliver. Just put enough of the body on Bricky to deflect him so he couldn't get a good grip on the ball. 7.31 to go in the half. Virginia by one. Back after these words from our good friends at Budweiser. The last time Virginia was able to beat Duke, 1983, 109-66 in the ACC tournament. And for Virginia, it only seems like it was 1941 <laughs> the last time they beat Duke. 16 straight Duke victories. Mike Krzyzewski is 10th year at Duke. You should take a look at the shooting so far. Hasn't been very sharp from the field or the line tonight for these two clubs. Stiff in close. Boy, he's tough in there. What a great catch. Six points for Stiff. Virginia matches their biggest lead at three. McCaffrey had a little trouble with it on the baseline. He'll bring it back out to Hurley. Well, I think Oliver contributed to his difficulty. Oliver really has shown himself to be a great defender. Davis. Hill. And back to Davis. With the exception of McCaffrey, Duke not really strong in terms of perimeter shooting right at the moment. McCaffrey's going to take it, and he got it. Well, he maybe he that one. He just he drilled that baby, but Duke, you know, Hill is not going to shoot the outside jumpers, and neither is Davis. Virginia with pretty good defensive position against McCaffrey. Hill's going to get the foul now against Stiff. That'll be Hill's first. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Raycom Sports and Entertainment and JP Sports. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of Raycom and JP Sports is prohibited. Brad Nessler and Dan Bonner with you in Charlottesville, Virginia. University Hall sold out tonight to watch the Cavaliers and the Blue Devils do battle in the ACC. Brian Stith, who is maybe on his way to being a first-team All-ACC performer, back at the free throw line. After missing his first three, he's hit three in a row. It's really important that he score well from the free throw line because he gets so many opportunities in there. Eight points for Stiff. And Virginia back in front by three. Smith coming back in for Crotty. 
in a ball game as intense as this where you rely on your point guard to do so much as Virginia does you really need to get Crotty a blow every now and again. Crotty has worked so hard against Hurley tonight. Here comes Hurley to bring it up for Duke. Virginia can really afford to drop off the guys on the outside. And immediately Hurley tried to go over Smith got the shot off the jump ball on the rebound possession. It's Duke's ball. Nice job by Anthony Oliver. Grab the ball right away from Christian Leighton. Gave Hurley too much room and he took the jumper from about the free throw line. Boy, Leighton gets foul number three. You could almost see that one coming. He came over and had a discussion with one of the officials during that last little break in the action as if to say, hey, you know, I'm not the one that's shoving underneath, and he went right back to it. Well, if you're going to go over and talk to the referee, you got to be careful. You never want to draw attention to yourself. <laughs> Matt Blunden stuck his nose in there, quite literally, took one for the team. That's Duke's third offensive foul. So Mike Krzyzewski finds, finds all of them offensive. <laughs> he sure does. Leitner sits down, out the lobby back in. Davis goes out, Bricky back in. Well, the foul trouble really piling up for Duke. Leitner with three. Abdul Nabi has two, and Abdul Nabi's not known for his finesse inside. At London with five points tonight over his average. Boy, Mike Krzyzewski is just really letting Steve have it over there. He has a way of just looking intense. Knew the camera was on him because he started talking as soon as we took that shot away. Virginia by four. Don't often see Stiff lose the ball inside like that once he's got his hands on it. Cavaliers with their biggest lead. Pass in low. Attended for Albanati. Last touch by Albanati. You can really see Virginia's defensive concept right there when Bricky had the ball. Turner played off him, and as soon as the pass went inside, Turner drops down. Abdul Nabi fumbles it out of bounds. But when Bricky's got the ball on the perimeter, Virginia's obviously not going to contest his shot. Bricky no more is a guy that plays above the rim than scoring from outside. And of course, he's got that knee injury he's coming off of. Look for Virginia to try for Stiff here, trying to match up inside against Thomas Hill. Turner hits the deck, scramble for the loose ball, last touch by Virginia. Cavaliers with their four-point lead had a chance to well, that's add how, to it. That's how intense a game it is, Brad. You got to wipe up the sweat from underneath the chairs on the bench with everybody diving over there. It's not the coolest building I've been in today either. And poor Lenny Wirtz, he's got to stand over there for the spot throw-in. That's the wrong spot to be in right at the moment. It's right in front of Mike Sussesky. Early will slowly set it to the Luke Blue Devils. Here's McCaffrey. He's taken two shots. He misses that one. London clears it off. Crotty to Oliver. Well, what a great job by Duke to get back and cover up. Crotty for three. Can't get it. Abdelnabi high for the rebound. And he's fouled from underneath by London. Terry Holland smiles while Mike Krzyzewski glares. Different approach. Right, but they both say the same thing. <laughs> And it's not will you be my Valentine. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> London picks up the foul. 25 fouls in this game already. Virginia has 12. Duke has 13. Now leading field goal shooters in the conference. Hits his first free throw. Three points, four boards so far tonight for Ala Abdelnabi. As we said before, he's really had a good year for Duke. Leitner's having a great year. Henderson with a great year. It's no wonder they're atop the ACC. Great rebound by Bricky, and he's... No, I was going to say he's fouled. He walked with it. Now, that's where Bricky likes to have the ball, down inside where he can power it up. Virginia with just over five minutes to go first half with a 24-21 lead. Oh. Early made him adjust his 
jump shot. Aldonavi pulls it off ahead to Bobby Hurley. Good hustle by Hurley to get over the screen. Hurley may have gotten away with a step. Now he'll take the three. Stiff pulls it off for Virginia. Boy, Stiff just with that little shoulder elbowed Thomas Hill out of bounds and got the ball. Stiff with a quiet eight points and he's got six rebounds. Here's Stiff. That was good ten. Virginia with that high post kind of offense. Nobody there to help out for Duke. Largest lead of the game. Virginia by five. Stiff with another rebound. Three on two for the Cavaliers. Turner off the glass. Maybe it's timeout time. 28-21. Virginia's certainly on a roll. Burley can't get it. Stiff has his third straight rebound. Bryant Stiff. Why not? He's done everything else. Mike Krzyzewski's got to talk things over with his troops. Cavaliers by 10 with 3.31 to go first half. Virginia up by 10. In talking to Coach Terry Holland before the game, he looked at Brian Stiff warming up and said, I wonder if Brian's got 40 in him tonight. He very well may. A big dunk there just before the timeout. Hits a three-pointer, 12 points, nine rebounds. And he's hit his last four shots. Brad, we've talked about Duke's defense, and they did a great job early in the game, but Virginia's defense has held Duke to six field goals in 16 and a half minutes. That's remarkable. Ricky comes up short. Oliver pulls it down. Virginia on a seven-point run. They can add to it here if they score this trip. London slows things down. See Abdul Nabi really dropping down the help out against Bricky. Oliver's got an open jumper. Kubak pulls it off for the Blue Devils. Hesitated on that jump shot. Was a little off balance going up. Duke very worried about Stiff. Now what do you do with a guy like Stiff? Well, I think one of the things you do is you go and attack him inside by trying to get it to Robert Bricky. Stiff has a foul, get him two. Lob down, low to Abdelabi, double team, but he's still got it. You know, and I think Stiff also got a little finger on that ball. Abdelabi with five. Cuts it back to an eight-point Virginia lead. Abdelabi is going to play way off Matt Blunden, so Blunden is going to be an outlet for the guards out front, but it's going to make it very difficult to get it to Stiff inside. Henderson all over Oliver. And Blunden didn't look for the return pass. And Dan Bonner almost touched the basketball here at University Hall for the first time in several years. Uh, that's a, usually it's about this <laughs> position that I used to touch it. Used to be farther down the bench, right? That's right. <laughs> that, that's Turner's fault. You just can't throw the ball. The guy's not looking at it. Smith turns it right back into the hands of the Cavaliers. Here's Oliver. Nice pass to Hurley. Very nearly got that one. Nice job by Smith running the fast break. Again, Virginia by 10. With under two minutes to go. Turnover's even. Ooh! Henderson got away with an elbow as he drove in and scored. Well, Terry Holland's really mad. Henderson twice. Shoulder and then elbow getting loose. Kubek on Stitt as he tries to work his way free. Haven't really heard very much offensively from Phil Henderson tonight. Stiff hits the deck hard. Oliver picks up the loose ball. Abdelnabi got the block. But it comes right back in a fresh 45 seconds for the Cavaliers. This game gets curiouser and curiouser. Smith playing the point. Trying to get the breather. In low. Stiff cross courts at Blunden's all alone. Clangs one off the rim. Big pile up underneath. Pile on Bricky. Stiff's going to go to the line. Ricky's second personal. Now, Matt Blunden is wide open in the corner because Matt Blunden really 
doesn't shoot very much from the corner. I think that's a shot that Blunden has to take, though. And they're stiff, battling inside. Blunden hit one from that spot earlier. You've got to be a threat offensively. Now, maybe what Blunden should do in that situation, if that's a little out of his range, take a dribble or two, see if he can get closer. If they come to guard, you're fine. If not, then shoot the ball from there. He could have taken about three dribbles, as open as he was. Stiff back at the free throw line where he's hit four in a row. Well, you just need to be aggressive offensively. Matt Blunden doing a real good job of that tonight. So much for the string of free throws by Stiff. Hurley brings it down in a hurry. Now an off-balance jumper doesn't go. Last touch by Bricky. Virginia really doing a nice job on the boards. Duke with the much bigger team, but Virginia's gotten them in foul trouble. The size more even right now. Virginia more than holding their own. This kid can shoot the ball. Kirby, nice pass to Stiff. All alone is Turner for three. Short. And Ricky pulls it down for Duke. Three on two break for the Blue Devil. Nice pass to Henderson. Nice move inside by Henderson. And how sweet was that? Catching the ball, turning in traffic. Cuts it back to a six-point Virginia lead. The Cavaliers will play it for one. We assume they will with 18 seconds to go in the half. Well, Duke's an awfully hard team to hold the ball and play for one. They're all over you defensively. Maybe take it if you can get it anytime, right? <laughs> Got a good one, go get it. Now they have to go get one. Smith. Terry Kirby is going to pump one for three. And the Cavaliers of Virginia, in front of the hometown fans, have surprised the fourth-ranked team in the country. Virginia 33, Duke 27. Cavaliers of Virginia haven't beaten Duke in the last 16 tries, and they're certainly off to a great start tonight here at home. They've led by as many as 10, and at halftime, they've got the six-point lead, 33-27, over the Blue Devils of Duke. Tonight's ACC action is brought to you by the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company, Buick, True Value Hardware, USA, and by Natural Light. Back at University Hall in Charlottesville at halftime, the Virginia Cavaliers try to shock the ACC in the basketball world. Have a six-point halftime lead over the fourth-ranked Duke Blue Devils. And welcome back to Charlottesville, everybody. Brad Nessler and Dan Bonner with you. Dan, uh, you look at this game, and I don't think we expected it to quite go this way. Duke has been rolling along, just taking care of business in the ACC, but Virginia's tough at home. Well, Virginia's tough at home, Brad, and I've seen enough of these Duke-Virginia matchups during the Mike Krzyzewski era to know that these guys always really get after one another. And so the fact that it's an extremely physical game comes as really no surprise at all. Virginia, however, has been able to do something tonight that they don't do very much against Duke, and that is they've maintained their offensive consistency throughout the game. It was Duke that went through a long stretch without scoring any points in the first half. Virginia's held up well against Duke's defense. Actually, it's been Virginia's defense that's really taken control of the game in the first half. You know, we talked for a while that Bryant Stith really wasn't involved for Virginia because Duke's defense had taken him out of the game. All of a sudden, he's got 13 points and eight rebounds at halftime. Stith is one of those guys that just keeps working and working and working. You're going to keep him out of the ball game for a little while, but it's just going to be impossible to keep him out for very long. All right, let's take a look at our Mazda game summary brought to you by Mazda Cars and Trucks. Mazda, it just feels right. The Duke Blue Devils, with a big advantage on the inside, really weren't able to convert very much. Here, a la Abdul Nabi, this is very early in the basketball game, takes the ball inside and scores, but Duke really didn't see very much of that. Virginia adjusted very well, kept the ball away from the inside. One of the ways they did it was by attacking inside with this guy, Brian Stiff. Here you see Stiff getting good position against Thomas Hill, who goes for the steal. Ala Abdel Nabi coming, but too late. They're Stiff with the dunk. Now, right after this play, Brian Stiff brings the house down with a three-point shot. Scoring, rebounding, 
His strong point of his game is not his three-point shooting yet, but here he drills this one. He was four of four from three-point range against Marquette on Saturday, and so now he's made five in a row from behind that three-point line. And that ended a seven-point run for the Virginia Cavaliers. Gave him a ten-point lead, which has been their biggest on the night. They didn't quite hold it here at halftime, 33-27, but still, they've really had Duke's number tonight. We'll see if they can hold it through the second half. Duke, when they trail at halftime this year, they're one and three. When Virginia leads at halftime, they are 8-1 and one on the season. So can they hold this thing together for another 20 minutes? Well, it's going to be very interesting to see whether they can or not. As I said, one of the things that has characterized these Duke-Virginia games is over the past 16 games at any rate is the Duke defense goes through a stretch of the game where they simply close down Virginia's offense. And a lot of these games have been very close contests, and it's been that stretch in the ball game that has really spelled doom for Virginia. Virginia avoided it in the first half, unlike down in Durham where they were behind by 15 early and never could catch up. They are leading in the ball game. They have to like the position that they're in. I'm not a good person to make predictions, but I think somebody's <laughs> going to foul out of this game. <laughs> and also, you have to wonder if the no. free throw shooting, that's going to come into play. The number one and number two free throw shooting teams in the conference so far, they haven't proved that tonight. I think that'll be the difference, maybe. Well, I think that's going to have to come into play. I don't think you're going to see any more finesse out here in the second half than you did in the first half. These teams are going to continue to get after one another, and I really think that if both teams don't improve from the free throw line, then one of them is going to look back on it and say, hey, this is where we lost the game. All right. Well, at halftime, it is Virginia out in front. 33-27 is our halftime score. Virginia trying to upset the number four team in the country. We'll be back in Charlottesville after this message from the Atlantic Coast Conference. Devils, one of their victims here tonight in Charlottesville at halftime. The Cavaliers with the 33 to 27 halftime edge. And we'll be back with more activity here at intermission in Charlottesville after this word from your local ACC stations. Fans, just a reminder, pick up your ballots and vote for your choice for Pepsi's Best of the ACC. One of the candidates is sophomore forward Christian Leitner from Duke, averaging a double-double in ACC play. He's among the Atlantic Coast Conference leaders in free throw percentage and rebounds. He leads the Duke team at over nine boards a game and is scoring at almost 17 points per ball game. Leitner's been in double figures in both points and rebounds five of his last six games. Remember, ballots are available at Pepsi and Diet Pepsi displays, and we'll be announcing the fans' choice during the 1990 ACC tournament. Raycom Sports and Entertainment and JP Sports exclusive coverage of ACC basketball is brought to you by Infinity, Holly Farms, Lowe's, and by Mazda. Stay tuned for the Holly Farms Players of the Game Award brought to you by Holly Farms, America's number one brand of fresh chicken. Holly Farms will contribute $1,000 to the ACC to be distributed among the member institutions under a conference-approved plan. The Holly Farms Player of the Game to be awarded near the conclusion of our broadcast. Well, the fans have had something to cheer about through the first half as the hometown Cavaliers leading the Duke Blue Devils 33-27 as we take a look at our halftime statistics brought to you by U.S. Air. You can see there the Duke field goal percentage at only 30%. Great job by Virginia defensively. They've covered up Duke on the inside. They've prevented the three-point shot. You can see Virginia leading and rebounding 23 to 22. The turnovers are even. One stat that we don't have up there that's very interesting, Brad, the Duke Blue Devils average 18 assists per game as a team. In the first half, we've got them for one assist. That's something And else. what that means is the Virginia defense is really disrupting their offensive patterns. Neither point guard having a particularly good game. John Crotty 0 for 5 from the field, three assists. Bobby Hurley, one for seven from the field, no assists. So neither point guard really got off the mark in the first half. Look for them to get going. And that 41% for Virginia as compared to Mike Krzyzewski's troops, 69% from the free throw line. For the Cavaliers, if they're to win this game, that has got to drastically improve. And 
at this stage neither team has been tearing it up from the line as we said earlier they come in as the number one and number two ranked teams in the Atlantic Coast Conference in free throw shooting percentage the fans of sellout crowd at University Hall in Charlottesville have loved every minute of this one six point halftime lead the Cavaliers when leading at halftime this year are eight and one Duke when they trail at intermission they're one and three. Let's see if the Cavaliers hold it and pull off the upset. Number one, Missouri's already fallen tonight. Number four, Duke in a little bit of trouble as Virginia controls things to start the second half. Stiff, who led all scores in the first half with 13. Nice defense by Duke. Not only did they prevent Stiff from turning and shooting, but they prevented Crotty from getting open on the perimeter. Crotty will take the three. The lobby up high for the rebound. Brody just hasn't had any luck tonight, but unlike the North Carolina State game where he was held scoreless, he's done some other things tonight to really help his ball club. Kubik had a notion from three point land, got it in low and to Leitner instead. Brody playing off Hurley, giving him that three. Now Kubek will take it and drops it in for three. And that for Kubek, his first field goal of the night. Kubek's really had a much better year shooting the ball this year than his two previous campaigns. Can't really give him that three-point shot. Crotty, nice move on the baseline, and that won't even go for it. That's good defense by Abdel Nabi. Crotty looking at Abdel Nabi rather than at the rim, trying to avoid the charge, misses the shot. Go back to tie it. Can't get it to go. Turner with a rebound. What a good snatch by Turner right there. You could hear, even over from our position, him slap the ball into his hand. Duke scored the last seven points of this ball game. Virginia led 33 to 23. Been a game of streaks for both clubs. Crotty's going to keep on trying. Same result, and Leitner with another rebound. Crotty's 0 for 8 from the field. That's really the best shot he's had, though, Brad. Boy. That sounded like a slap. Oliver picks up the foul. It'll be his second. 18-16 to play the ball game and a low-scoring affair with Virginia on top by three. Now we mentioned Virginia getting into those stretches against Duke. Well, they don't score. It's been a while since they've scored their last basket. Terry Holland's upset, but that's been ruled a shooting foul. Henderson with seven points. Henderson's been in double figures every game this year except the North Carolina game that you and I did, and that was part of the difference and the reason that the Tar Heels blew the doors off the Blue Devils that night. Well, Henderson had four fouls in the first half of that ball game. Henderson got the roll. He has eight points. Duke on a 9-0 run. Virginia really needs to get something going offensively here. Notice Abdel Nabi playing way off Jeffries. That makes it very difficult for Virginia to operate inside. Turner works to get it into Stiff, and Stiff's fouled from behind by Kubek. That'll be three on Greg Kubek. Not a good foul by Kubek. If he's going to play behind Stiff there, he knows that he's got help going to drop down. If he's going to play in front of Stiff, Abdel Nabi's behind him. There's just no reason to reach around the back of Stiff like that. And a whistle. Another foul in the paint. That foul's against Bobby Hurley. Hang on to Kenny Turner. He was not in the lane. It was away from the action. Hurley second. Fans really on Hurley. Has he done something to them? <laughs> He's a starting freshman. That's enough for this crowd. Turner misses. Leitner another board. Abdel Nabi made him change the shot. Kubek maybe should have taken it while he had it. Henderson double team. Nice pass down to Nobby, though. What a battle that was for the rebound. Jeffries clears everybody away with the elbow. Yeah, a lot of yelling going on in there after that rebound. It's much safer over here. Of course, I always thought that. <laughs> Stiff. In the second half so far. Oliver off the glass. That's eight points now for Oliver. He's really had a nice game for Virginia. That time Jeffries got himself down inside and made Alcal Nobby guard him so he couldn't come to help out as well. That ends a 9-0 Duke run. And it 
takes a three-point Virginia lead, and here come the Cavaliers. Oliver drives the baseline. Can't get it to go. Stiff, another offensive rebound, and he puts it back in. Boy, how did he get that one to go in? 11 rebounds for Stiff and 15 points. There's another double-double for him. What do you call it when you get 20 and 20? <laughs> Double, 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 I guess. <laughs> Virginia with a five-point cushion. They'll slow it down. Stiff for three. Short. Got his own rebound. 15 foot. Nice job by Virginia responding to that Duke run. You're right, Brad. Really been a streaky basketball game. Seven here and seven there, nine here and five there. That's where these teams have been playing. With under 16 minutes to go, it's the Cavaliers at home by seven. Abdelnabi, one-hander on the baseline, tough shot. Crowley and low to Oliver. Nice steal by Leitner. Long lead pass for Kubak. Kubak knocked it, it out of bounds. Kubek hustled right into the second row of seats. And with 15.32 to go in the ball game, Virginia with a 39-34 lead. Back after this from Natural Light. This is what you call a good defensive execution right here. Good double team, Leitner steals the ball. Now you want to be a referee, huh? Okay, in slow motion now, who taps that out of bounds? I'd say he got the first down by about a half <laughs> yard. <laughs> no, no. Those two guys aren't the football players. That's right. That's a good hustle by Kubek. It looked from that very slow motion replay like Kubek knocked the ball out of bounds. Now, of course, Mike Krzyzewski was right on top of the play. He had a different idea. Stiff with a career high in rebounds to go with his 17 points. And Virginia with a four-point edge in the rebounds, and they've out-rebounded six of their last seven opponents. Part of the reason they've been winning. The two-man game between Crotty and Stiff. Double team on Stiff. He goes right over the top of it. What a move. Spins right into Abdelnabe. You figure, okay, he can't go any further. Just goes right up over him. An elevation bucket and 19 points for Brian Stitt. Oh, that pass. Turner on the run. Pulls up. And foul Leitner trying to get his own rebound. That was excellent defense by Christian Leitner. He was back one man against two, defending that two-on-one. And in that situation, what you want to do is to force them to shoot the jump shot. And that's exactly what he did. I think he bothered Turner's shot. Great defensive play. And Leitner has three fouls all in the first half, so he couldn't afford to get much closer. Did the perfect job defensively. Back comes Duke, trailing by seven, under 15 minutes to go. You know, maybe knowing that he has three fouls, you take the ball right at him. Abdelnabi from the free throw line. Of course, nobody out there is uh, keeping a little tote pad, so you know how many fouls he's got. Abdelnabi, nine points, cuts it back to a five-point Cavalier edge. Matt Blunden, who's in the ballgame again, really had a fine first half as well, six points. There he is. Working in the lane, kicks it out to Oliver for three. I'll tell you what, Brad, Matt Blunden has been an offensive threat in this ballgame. He's looked for his shot, and so when he gets it in there, the defense collapses on him, and that frees Oliver. Bricky on the drive, and he's going to be fouled, pushing foul on Stitt. And that's going to be his first foul, as tough as he's played on both ends, only one personal. Stiff just didn't move his feet very well right there. But that's why we talked earlier in the first half, that's actually two fouls on Stiff, Brad, about how Matt Blunden has to take shots, even though he might miss some of them. You've got to be a threat offensively. He's got six points, so they guard him in there, and that opens up Oliver for the three. Bricky's going to take it off the inbound and got it. Not very good defense on the inbounds pass right there. This has been such an intense ball game. Duke has the advantage in depth. You wonder if it's going to wear Virginia down. What these teams are going to spend tomorrow in the world for. I mean, they are banging around underneath. 
Turner double teamed. He'll go right over the top of that. Can't get it to drop. A great Blunden. hustle. Blunden got the board. Oliver from outside again. London's got it again. Abdelnabi took it away from him. That's just size right there. Nice rebound by Abdelnabi. Here comes Hurley. His jumper won't go. Henderson, tough underneath. He's fouled. Virginia looks a little winded to me, Brad. They look a little tired. Virginia coaching staff upset that no foul was called on Abdelnabi, but from our vantage point, didn't really look like a foul. He did a nice job taking that ball away from Blunden, who had excellent position. Foul on Virginia was on Oliver, his third. Abdelnabi gets a breather. Bryant Davis checks in. And Kenny Turner is going to get a rest for Virginia. So the Cavaliers right now with Blunden, Stith, Prouty, Oliver, and Jeffries. Duke with Leitner, Ricky, Henderson, Davis, and Hurley. And the line, Phil Henderson, 6'4", senior, out of Union Park, Illinois. Henderson, perfect from the free throw line. Three free throws all this half. And he can go into double figures again if he hits the next one. As we said, he's only missed one game being out of double figures, and that's because he got an early foul trouble against North Carolina. Ten points for Henderson and a four-point ball game. With London and Jeffries in the game at the same time, not a lot of offensive firepower on the court for Virginia. This guy has been the offense tonight for the Cavaliers, but he can't do it by himself. Well, working hard, he was open. You got to give a guy, inside guy who works that hard to get open. You got to give him the ball when he's open. You work that hard, you don't get the ball. You don't work that hard the next time. Jeffries got Laker in the air. Laker had to back off with the foul trouble, and Jeffries missed it in close, but he's fouled. Davis will pick that one up. Jeffries, when he has gotten the ball inside, has been very aggressive with it. Watch Matt Blunder. Look how hard he's working. He's open now. Still open, does not get the basketball. Now the reason they, the reason it wasn't thrown to him is because Leitner, just out of your picture, was really helping out. Ted Jeffries at the free throw line. Freshman with four points now in the night. First cousin of uh, Adrian Branch, former great at Maryland and went on and played in the NBA. Jeffries, three out of four from the line, and Virginia back to a 46-40 lead. They're giving Bricky room outside, aren't they? Oh, what hustle! Hurley picks up the loose ball, leaves it for Layton. And I think they're going to call offensive interference there, up through the net. Somebody got a hand up there. The ball was on the rim, and Stiff very definitely hit the net. Watch this hustle here on both sides. The ball knocked away by Oliver. Blunden seemingly has it. Everybody, Blunden, he made two dives here. Leitner, now watch as the ball is up on the net right there. That's a good call. You can't touch the net while the ball's on the ring. The Virginia coaches, they're upset. They thought it should have been called a walk against Christian Leitner. So Leitner gets credit for his eighth point. Blunden leans in on Davis. Four-point Cavalier lead. Nice slide. Nice Stiff. Can't get it. Brian Davis high for the rebound. Hurley for three. First three of the night for Hurley. And it cuts it to a one-point Virginia lead. A lot of bumping ball out there. The physical nature of this game hasn't changed. You even have to pay for your jump shots tonight. Oliver's got two straight threes for Virginia. Hurley puts his hands up, sort of asking his teammates, hey, who's got Oliver? That's a big basket. Ricky. To Henderson for three. That was short. Ricky got the rebound. Leaned in to Blunden, and the foul on Ricky. Good recovery by Blunden. He forgot to block Ricky out. Ricky got the ball. But Blunden, not making the second mistake, moves his feet, draws the foul. That's a good play. Timeout. 
With 11-21 to go in the ball game, Cavaliers still holding on. 49-45 over Duke. Stay tuned for the Holly Farms Players of the Game Award. Brought to you by Holly Farms, America's number one brand of fresh chicken. Forty-nine, forty-five. Virginia at home with a four-point lead with 11-21 to go in the game. And the field goal shooting, the three-point shooting, I should say. Virginia with four and Duke with only two. And somewhere along the line, Duke may have to warm that statistic up just a bit. Brad Nessler and Dan Bonner with you. And about 9,000 fans close to it here in University Hall. They've really seen an intense basketball game. Roddy gets it right back from Turner. On both ends of the court, it seems like every pass, every shot is contested. And Virginia with a big turnover there, and that'll get it back to Duke with a chance to cut it to a two-point Cavalier lead. Just too many blue shirts inside for that ball to go through. Brian Stiff didn't even have a chance to go up and try to get it. Ricky just lost the handle. Was thinking about what he was going to do offensively, I think, and forgot to take the ball with him. I think he saw Ala Abdul Nabi with good position inside. Each team with 12 turnovers. I think that's a key stat. Duke bases a lot of its offense on its defense, generating those turnovers and easy baskets. Virginia hasn't really turned it over that much. Crotty still can't get it to go. Crotty scoreless here with 10 and a half minutes to play. Bill Henderson pulls up for the three. Stiff has another rebound. 14 on the night. A career high for Bryant Stiff. You know, I know he hasn't gotten every rebound. It just seems that way. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Oliver passed to Jeffries all along. Freshman's going to wait for some help. Oliver in the paint. Abdelnabi pulls it off for Duke. That's a good strong move by Oliver, but Duke defended it pretty well. Abdelnabi on the other end. Can't answer with the bucket. Nice move to the basket, though, by Oliver. He's really fouled. For a guy his size to take the ball that quickly to the basket, Jeffries is trying to get in position here to draw the charge, but just can't. Oliver with a nice move, slides by, a little bit of contact. Duke's made 12 of their last 13 free throws, which is something that may be the difference in this ball game tonight. Al Abdelnabi at the line. Well, certainly with as poor as they've shot the ball from the field, as poorly as they've shot the ball from the field, the free throws definitely keep him in the ball game. Abdelnabi two out of four from the line, and he's in double figures now with 10 points to go with his nine rebounds. Al born in Egypt. Played his high school ball in Bloomfield, New Jersey. Hits both. He has six points this half, 11 for the game, and it's a two-point Virginia lead. Early made Crotty pick up his dribble way out high. Oh, that's a dangerous pass right there. London. Cross courts it to Crotty in low. This is Turner. He left it for Blunden. London can't get it to go, but he's fouled. Nice ball movement by the University of Virginia on that particular series. London's used to throwing them rather than catching them, but he makes a big league catch right here. Under pressure, Kubek very nearly gets there. Abdelnabi gets him on the wrist. You see London <laughs> pass the ball out of there. You get the idea that both of these teams would be interested in winning this game. They sure have played from the opening tap with as much intensity as we've seen all year. London has seven points. And that's really a big contribution. London averaging only a little more than three points a game. Virginia, 50% from the free throw line. London got the <laughs> second one to go somehow. Well, that's easy. You bounce it on the back of the rim, it bounces straight up there and right down. It was all by design. Four point Virginia lead. Position on 
defense. Senses the cut, Cummins steps up. Nice job by Blunden. Now Bonavi will have to sit down. Bricky will come back in. Mike Krzyzewski with that glare over there in front of the Duke bench. Now that's a very attractive tie. A guy who wears a tie like that probably shouldn't be glaring quite so much. Tommy Amaker with some words of advice to Bob Lanabe. Yeah, don't foul. He's only got one left to give. Stiff. Oh, oh, oh. Somehow that went in over Leitner, and Stiff is hurt. Stiff is down, and he's hurt his knee. Early for three. Doesn't get it. Henderson puts it back. Well, here comes Stiff limping up the court, and Terry Holland is really hot. He thinks play should have been halted right away as Stiff went down, and he is. Well, you know, I think he really has a point. There wasn't any fast break or anything. Duke did have the basketball. I don't know whether he hurt his knee or whether he's just got a cramp. The way they're fooling with his foot over there, you'd think it's a cramp. Let's hope so. And Holland says, how about stopping the ball game when my star player goes down as we'll get another chance to see it. Well, star player or not when anybody goes down. Watch Stiff climb the ladder here. Here's Leitner. Stiff, he actually lost control of the ball and sort of tipped it in. Look, look at Stiff's face. Until he hits the ground, until that ball goes in the basket, his eyes are trained on the rim. And then he said, wait a minute, something hurts here. It well, does appear to be a cramp in his leg. You see him grabbing his calf there. And that's the way they fiddle around if you've got a cramp. You can certainly understand as hard as he's worked tonight how he might get one of those. Bryant Stiff has been the player of the week in the ACC three times this year. And tonight he has 21 points and 14 rebounds. He might have that honor again this time next week. He goes off walking rather gingerly on that right leg. But we're going to hope that it's just a cramp in the right calf. And... Hope to see him back in here. As it is, he's given his team a six-point lead, 53-47, 8-48 to go in the ball game. Virginia trying to shock number four, Duke. Well, I'll tell you what, they're not going to be able to do it without Brian Stiff in the ball game. They're going to have to get him back in there quickly. It's a whole different look now. Blunden, Jeffries, Turner, Oliver, and Crotty, who's got his hands on the ball. That's the five for Virginia. Now, Duke without Abdel Nabi isn't nearly as big, but they've got a little bit quicker lineup in the game. They ought to be able to apply a little more defensive pressure. Oliver goes high and drops one in. Boy, that's a big basket. Your stud goes out of the game. Somebody else has to pick it up. Oliver with a big basket right there. Oliver has 16 points. Oliver with 16. Blunden with eight. More than offset the fact that Crotty hasn't scored. Crotty's going to pick up the foul here. Crowdy picks up the foul as Hurley drove the baseline. Oliver really being aggressive with the basketball. Sees the lane, penetrates, and Hurley doesn't turn and force him back outside. Oliver recognizes it, takes it to the basket. Virginia clears it off after the miss. And with an eight-point lead, under eight minutes to go, Crowdy. Crowdy might come out of this game with no points, but he's going to keep trying. He's 0 for 10 from the field. Hurley on the other end. That's kind of an out-of-control attempt. Well, you just saw Crowdy's going to get fouled right there. You just saw both point guards take horrible shots. Mike Sassesky, you think he wants to strangle somebody, or was that a different sign? <laughs> it could be a little of each. His team down by eight with 7.44 to go in the game. Virginia scored six straight points. Crotty, who hasn't been able to buy one from the field, is going to get an opportunity from the free throw line. He had 30 points in the first matchup between these two teams about five weeks ago. Scoreless tonight until that free throw. Well, a competitor like John Crotty is going to take one point instead of the 30 if they win the ball game. Crotty hits both. And with 7.44 to go in the game, Virginia by 10. Back after these words from our good friends at Natural Life. 
With Dan Bonner, I'm Brad Nessler. 7.44 to go at University Hall, and the Cavaliers have matched their biggest lead of the ball game. The scoring run eight straight in the last couple of minutes. Brian Stitt still out of the ball game. Duke shooting 32% from the floor tonight. Just a great defensive effort by the Virginia Cavaliers. You just can't say enough about the way they've played defense to this point in the ball game. Ricky, his jumper doesn't go. And Jeffries, nice position for the rebound. Virginia continues to do a good job on the boards. London back door to Crotty. Now Leitner, unlike Alphamabi, was playing out on Jeffries far away from the basket. That's what opened it up in the inside, and I think Mike Sosewski's really upset by that mistake. Biggest lead of the game. Leitner with the offensive rebound. Here comes Virginia, two on one. Crotty and Oliver. Crotty does it himself. Crotty's had six points in a row, Brad. This is a 14-point game all of a sudden. Mike Krzyzewski's team down by 14. 6.45 to play in Charlottesville. Well, they're celebrating with 6.45 to go. Still a long ways to go, but the Cavaliers have a 14-point lead, their biggest of the night. And Duke has missed their last nine from the field. Mike Krzyzewski making some wholesale changes at that timeout, looking for a combination. Nice pass by Leitner to Abdelnabi, and he's hip-checked by Blunden. <laughs> Blunden has really played a fine basketball game tonight. Duke very aggressive with the basketball. Leitner putting it on the floor, getting around that defense. The defense has to come. He finds Abdelnabi. London hasn't played this well since he passed for 248 yards and two touchdowns against Clemson this year. <laughs> Abdelnabi, the free throw line, a 79% free throw shooter. Allo's got seven points this half, 12 for the game. Matt Blunden now trying to orchestrate the crowd, asks him to come on. Crowley pulls off the missed free throw. Oliver's going to take the jumper on the other end. Maybe a bit too quick. Well, it might be a bit too quick, but Virginia's been playing very well. You don't want to get overly conservative at this point. you got to walk a very fine line if you're the Cavaliers. Laker can't get the jump shot. London saved it, and it comes back to Hill. London was trying to get it to Oliver. Normally, you wouldn't try to make that play underneath that, the opponent's basket. Just went right through Oliver's hand. Virginia by 11 under the six-minute mark. Stiff and Davis got tangled up. They're going to call the foul on Brian Davis. Well, the problem for the Duke Blue Devils and Brian Davis in particular, since he's matched up against Brian Stiff, with the game on the line as it is here, you know that's where Virginia's going to go with the basketball. Stiff is... As you look statistically, not the guy to foul. And tonight he's had a rough time from the free throw line, though. He's only hit half his free throws, but normally an 84% free throw shooter coming in. And that's third best in the ACC, and he's still having trouble tonight. Going to need those free throws down the stretch. Duke is going to try to pick up the defensive tempo of his basketball game. Probably going to get some more fouls. They're a team that can pick up that defensive pace as well as anybody in the country, too. They're trying to cut it back to single digits, but they throw it away. Brad, I'll tell you what, Virginia's defense has carried them all night and continues to do so. Crotty, that could have been a killer had it gone. I don't think that's a good shot. You were talking about a little too quick. I don't think you need to take the three-pointer on the break. Up 11 with five minutes left. Abdelnabi, one-hander baseline. Got it? Abdelnabi with 14. You can just feel the apprehension building up inside University Hall. Both Oliver and Crotty now have taken some quick jump shots that would have been going for the juggler had they gone. They would have been great, but neither 
connected. And it's a nine-point game, 61-52. Terry Holland's Cavaliers try to hold on and break a long string of losses. They drop 16 in a row to this Duke Blue Devil team. Jeffries comes in. Blunden goes out. Good night's work for Blunden. He's not done, I'm sure. Brian Davis out. McCaffrey in there for Duke, a good shooter. See, Abdelnabi doesn't come out and guard Jeffries. Stiff. Calmly holds on to it. And Evans threw it away. That's not your picture perfect. <laughs> Turner on the baseline, McCaffrey all over Crotty. No foul there, Crotty got it to go. That's what you call a tough move. We told you Crotty keep trying. He was 0 for 10 from the field at one stretch. Now he's got eight points. Back to West Virginia's last eight points. Oh, he's looking for stiff. Brian wasn't looking for the ball, though. He almost pulled the dribble up to try to get the pass to him. Here Four minutes. Again, and he's going to get fouled. Call this one on McCaffrey. That's his first. And with 4:04 to go in the game, Virginia by 11, and Crotty set to go to the free throw line. Bobby Hurley coming back in the ball game. Mike Szczeski not real pleased with the way things were going when Hurley was in there, but he's got to have Hurley in the ball game against Crotty as we run down the stretch. This game very similar to the game North Carolina won at the Dean Dome over Duke in that Bobby Hurley didn't have the greatest game and Phil Henderson didn't score a lot of points. That's been the story again tonight. Great defense by Virginia. Crotty now has hit the last nine Virginia points. That game against North Carolina, we mentioned Henderson didn't score a lot because he was in foul trouble. Today, it's just been a matter of Anthony Oliver with some help from his friends. London comes back in. And Crotty has picked up the Cavaliers and has carried them. The last about two minutes of this ball game. A junior out of Spring Lake, New Jersey, carrying his club, and they're up by 13. Leitner in low. Turner's guarding him in there. Leitner ought to be able to get the ball up over Turner. Leitner's in double figures now with 10, but he hasn't been much of a factor. Rebound comes off to Leitner, his 11th for the night. Ooh, Stiff almost stole the ball. He's done everything else. I think he's got his heels. McCaffrey's jumper, air ball. Blunden catches it on the weak side, and here comes Virginia with an 11 point lead. Stiff. Leitner knocked it away. Virginia asking for a reset of the 45 second clock. It is reset. That's assistant coach Tom Perrin. I think telling Brian Stiff they really don't need that shot in that situation. Virginia going to call a timeout. Talk about what they want to do with an 11 point lead. The ball and three minutes and 18 seconds left in the game. We will see what they do with it. 65 54 Cavaliers hanging on over Duke. Virginia Cavaliers try to pick up their third win in the ACC and try to drop Duke to 7-2 and two in the conference. And there's what we have. 3.18 to go and Virginia by 11. Mike Krzyzewski's team, 18-3 and three overall and ranked fourth in the country. Number one, Missouri's been beaten tonight by Kansas State. Number four, Duke about ready to fall unless they come up with something in the next three minutes plus. And there's a steal by Hurley. Henderson for three. That helps the cause. And they can come up with something in the next three minutes plus, Brad. They've got an awful lot of firepower. Crotty with Hurley all over it. Now, you know Terry Holland didn't call that timeout and told his team to turn the ball over to Duke. Got to watch the five-second counts. London got it to Crotty. Virginia trying to work some of the clock. They've got it down to 20 on his shot clock. 2.36 on the game clock. There. That's the handle going in. Charging foul on Crotty. Bobby Hurley held his 
ground, and Duke gets it back, trailing by only eight. John Crotty has had success penetrating into the lane. I think the charging foul is called because Crotty comes with that right arm. Hurley did not have his position established. I think the fact that Crotty pushed with the right arm is why the charge was called. Hurley kind of got high low, and somebody got him in the end. Those two, Anderson misses a three. And it'll be Virginia Ball. Nice block out by Kenny Turner. Kept Christian Leitner away from the basketball, so Virginia recovers it. Henderson, a very fine three-point shooter, as is McCaffrey. You can see the offensive concept for Duke the last couple times has been to get Henderson open behind that three-point line. Made the first one, missed that one. They're only three for 11 from three-point range. That's a foul on Hurley in the backcourt. That's three on Hurley. We know Virginia's going to get some opportunities from the free throw line in this last two minutes and 21 seconds of the ball game. And John Crotty, who scored Virginia's last 10 points, is going to go to the line. So look at the fouls. Abdullabi has four. You know, what I'm amazed about is that nobody's fouled out of this game yet. We had so many fouls so early in the basketball game. Christian Leitner had three relatively early in the first half. See, I told you I couldn't predict. That was my halftime <laughs> prediction. Somebody would be gone by now. Crotty's hit his last four free throws. This one rolls off, and Leitner has another board. He's well into double figures on the rebound with 13. Hurley for three. Rattles out. Abdelnabi, good position. And it won't go for him. That would have been a chance for a three-point play. Now Virginia's struggling right now. One thing that Duke has not been able to do very much of today is get those offensive rebounds, but in a big situation, Ala Abdul Nabi comes up with one. Last year's Naismith National Coach of the Year, Mike Krzyzewski, who took his club to the Final Four. Abdul Nabi, 79% free throw shooter. And he's had four out of five from the line in the second half. 15 points, 11 rebounds. He's really, he's really been the one constant for Duke tonight. Former Mr. Basketball in New Jersey. Hits both. And all of a sudden, it's a six-point game. Ricky back in the ball game for defensive purposes. Abdullabi with the four personal fouls. Duke trying to create some pressure. That's a good coaching move. 2-12 to play. Hurley picks up a quick one on... The pass into Crotty, and that's four now on Hurley. John Crotty missed his last free throw. Two minutes and 12 seconds remaining. Duke has a little team huddle, and Abelabi comes back in, and Bricky goes out. Virginia's hit all but one of their free throws in this half, and that was the last trip down when Crotty missed. Hurley has four fouls. Leitner has three. Abdelnabi has four. Guy Crotty, who was scoreless in the first half, has come on with an excellent second half. The question now is to whether or not Abdelnabi can check back in at this new point. can't go out of the ball game and come back in until some time runs, but they inbounded the ball and a foul was called on Crotty, so the ball did become alive again. Abdelnabi ought to be able to come back in. The only thing that hasn't changed is the scoreboard clock, but... But, but the ball was alive. Right. right. Any time to off the clock. Did you start it? Did you stop it? Did you start it? Yes, but I don't think it's a touch. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, right. Did you start it and stop it? That's that is fine. a legal substitute. Honey Words said, did you start it and stop it? He got a positive response from the timekeeper on that, although no time did come off the clock. Well, when the ball seconds. becomes live, as the timekeeper, you have to start the clock. When the whistle blows, you have to stop it. So when the ball becomes alive, Abdul Nabi can come back in the basketball game. Now, the only thing about all this is, this is a lot like Mike Krzyzewski getting a free timeout to make John Crotty stand there and cool his heels at the free throw line. Good point. I don't think that's what Mike planned when he put Abdul Nabi in the game. He just wanted him in for rebounding and offense. Crotty has missed two in a row. 
that and did cool him off. The front end of the one and one twice. Twice in a row. Early all the way in, reverse layup. Four point game. 2.03 to go. Virginia clinging to a 65 61 inch. This has got to be deja vu for the Virginia Cavaliers in their game on Saturday against Marquette. They had an eight point lead, or excuse me, a seven point lead right at the end of that ball game, only to see Marquette score the last seven points of the game, send it into overtime. Virginia was able to win the ball game in overtime, but the Duke Blue Devils, nine points in a row. And 14 of 14 and uh, four has been the difference for Duke. They've scored 14 points to only four for Virginia over the course of the last few minutes. They had a 61 to 47 lead. Two minutes and three seconds to go. And they're, despite what the band's trying to drum up here, there's really a lull in this building right now. It was going crazy about five minutes ago. Well, when you lose to a team 16 times in a row, you get to think that just the roof is going to fall in at any time. There's a correction on the timeouts. Virginia with three left, Duke with one remaining. Well, I think if you're the University of Virginia at this point, Ryan Stith really hasn't handled the ball in scoring position very much. I think one of the things that you can look for is Virginia to try to go there. Anthony Oliver has had a tremendous game for Virginia, so if Duke is going to cover up that man right there, look for Anthony Oliver maybe to take the shot. Duke's pressure has been such, however, that Virginia trying to get it to Crotty hasn't really been able to get it into good scoring position. Crotty's had some opportunities, but missed the free throws. London got it into Crotty. Henderson with one on one pressure on Crotty. Almost had the steal. Virginia's only got about five seconds to get the ball across half court. Crotty can't take all day. Three, two, he just gets across. Now Hurley's got to be careful. He's got four fouls. Stiff wheels on Bricky. Bricky doesn't want to foul him there. Great steal by, by Hurley. And he's fouled by Stiff. Third on Stiff. It, has, it is all coming apart for Terry Holland's Virginia Cavaliers right at the moment. You know, you look back, now we're going to take a look at Hurley Steele here. Hurley does a nice job coming up with the basketball, never really controls it until right there. Stiff with his hand in there, that's a pretty good call on the foul. Let's go all the way back to the two jumpers, one by Oliver, one by Crotty, that Dan and I thought were kind of rushed by Virginia when they were trying to really put Duke away. And Hurley, an 80% free throw shooter, has hit four straight from the line for 11 points now. And he can make it a two-point Virginia lead with 142 to go if he hits the second one. See some obvious concern on the Virginia bench. Duke has looked dead just about a minute ago. Leitner. I thought Leitner was going back up with it. But Crotty comes out to Oliver. Foul on McCaffrey. And let's see, is the basket... You can Good. see, we can see from our position, Lenny Wirtz pointing a finger up in the air, indicating that that ball was on its way up. Leitner just loses the ball. Crotty recovers in time to see Oliver. Watch Bricky come from the back. That ball's on the way up. It's a foul against McCaffrey. Bricky with the block. Virginia once again to the free throw line. The last two times missing the front end of the one and one. Oliver, though, is going to get two. We set at halftime. Virginia would have to improve their free throw shooting in this second half because it would become very important. At least that's what we guessed, and that's come to pass. With 135 to go, Oliver hits. Oliver, a 71 percent free throw shooter on the year, and there's the free throw shooting the last five minutes. There's two misses though, the front end of the one and one. So with two misses, they lose the opportunity at four points. Another big one here. Oliver misses the second and Leitner the rebound. Four point Virginia lead. Henderson pulls it up. Can't get the jumper. Ball still loose on the baseline. A foul on Henderson. Henderson 
With the three-point shot, I think thought he was open. Mike Krzyzewski probably telling him he was a little too quick with it. But Anthony Oliver gets out against Henderson. Great defensive pressure without fouling, and then it's Oliver who comes up with that rebound. 66-62 with 1.23 to go. And right back to the free throw line go the Cavaliers. And Anthony Oliver, who just missed another one and one you know Anthony Oliver averages a little over seven points a game on the road he averages over 13 when he's on his home court and tonight it's been 17 he loves playing at home only one for four from the line that's three front end of the one and ones in the last two minutes for Virginia that they've missed Abelnavi spins in the lane great defense Virginia having a tough time from the free throw line grab, but I'll tell you what, their defense is holding the Duke Blue Devils at bay. Great defensive series by Virginia. Leitner picks up his fourth foul. Let's take a look at what Dan's talking about. Abdelnabi's going to get the ball inside. Now watch Oliver turn down. Blunden bodies him out. Abdelnabi with the fadeaway. That's not a good shot. There's Turner coming up with the ball, getting fouled right there by Leitner. Turner has shot almost 95% from the free throw line in his last 10 ball games. Shoots 85% from the line on the year, but percentages haven't seemed to mean very much. Virginia's missed four of its last five, including the front end of three one and ones. Let's see how Turner deals with it. Just like that. Five point Virginia lead. Kenny Turner. 6'6", six, six junior out of Indianapolis. Tries to run it back to a six-point lead with 1.11 to go. Timeout. Virginia takes a timeout with 1.11 to play, and they have the six-point lead and the standing ovation from the sellout crowd. What I'm sure they want to talk about with a six-point lead with a minute and 11 seconds left to go in the basketball game. They have to figure that Duke is going to try from three-point range. Now, I think the Blue Devils have plenty of time that if Virginia covers up the three-point lane and leaves the lane area open for Abdelnabi or Leitner, the Blue Devils have plenty of time to go in there and take the two if they get the easy two. So this is a really tough task for the University of Virginia. They're going to have to cover up Henderson, have to cover up McCaffrey, have to cover up Hurley on the perimeter, but they got to make sure that they do not give easy baskets inside. We might even see Kubek come off the bench if they need a ton of three-point shooters out there. Those would be the top four for Duke in the area. Dan mentioned three of them, Hurley, Henderson, and McCaffrey. Well, if you're Virginia, you call this time out to make sure that everybody's on the same page defensively. Duke will come out with Hurley, McCaffrey, Henderson, Leitner, and Abdelnabi. So they've got three guys that can shoot the three and the two big men underneath. Virginia will have Oliver, Crotty, Blunden, who's played a whale of a game on defense, Turner, and Stiff. Here we go. Hurley penetrates, leaves it for Leitner. And Duke goes right after the inside basket. That's a real good play. Figuring Virginia is going to be defending the three. Hurley penetrates, gets the inside bucket. Virginia with a little trouble with the pressure. They have it in the front court with 47 seconds to play. At this point, they want to run the clock. Take it down as far as you can and get a shot. Stiff out. Foul from behind by Henderson. Four-point lead with 37 seconds to go. But Stiff can add to that lead. You know, it almost seems unfair, Brad, that Stiff, who's carried so much of the load for Virginia last year and this year, particularly over this last string of games, only four of nine at the free throw line tonight. And Coming down with 37 seconds left, he's got the ball game right in his hands. So uncharacteristic to be four out of nine for this young man. Still can't quite find it from the line. Duke with another chance. They've got a score in a hurry. Hurley for three. Too hard. Stiff the rebound. 
And a foul on Abdelnabi. I'll make it McCaffrey in the backcourt. Brad, it's a familiar story. Virginia misses from the free throw line, plays great defense, blocks out well, gets the ball. Now, there's four. It's only a four-point difference. There's still 23 seconds left in this basketball game. This game is not over by any means. Stiff really needs to prevent any more of that man's hair from going gray to hit these free throws. An 84% free throw shooter shooting 40% from the strike tonight. There's Blunden. Blunden tips the ball. Duke controls hard. McCaffrey, triple team, puts up the jumper. Do you believe that shot? Two-point game, 15 seconds to go. The last, over the last two minutes, Brad, about two minutes and six seconds, I remember Trotty going to the line with two minutes and 21 seconds left in the game. Missed the front end of a one-and-one. One. Overall, in these last two minutes and 21 seconds of the ball game, Virginia has missed the front end of five one-and-ones. And at the 1-11 mark to go in this game, everybody in this place on their feet, a standing ovation for the Cavaliers. And now you can almost hear Dan and I talking down here courtside with 15 seconds to go, a two-point ball game. Christian Leitner overcoming that foul trouble. He's got 12 points, career-high 19 rebounds in the ball game. He's the guy that had the majority of the rebounds on the missed free throws. <laughs> That's one way to build up your rebound stats. If the other guys are going to miss the free throws, you have the inside position. Duke with no timeouts left. This is the last one. Huddled around Mike Krzyzewski. Obviously, Brad, with only 15 seconds left in the game and the shot clock off, Virginia does not need to shoot the basketball. However, Virginia does need to get the ball across the 10-second line. There's 15 seconds left. The Cavaliers have to get it in bounds and get it across the 10-second line. I believe that you'll see the Duke, the Duke Blue Devils try to play tough defense. Don't think they'll foul right away. London trying to get it in. Threw it in, and Leitner has it. Hurley really got away with one. He practically knocked. There's Blunden once again drawing the charge. That's unbelievable. Ricky Hurley. leaned in and Blunden took the charge. Hurley practically pulled Kenny Turner down, and that's why the ball, the referee Frank Scagliotta is telling Blunden that he can't move. It's a spot throw in. Got it into Stiff. Stiff foul by Henderson immediately with seven seconds to go. What a play by Matt Blunden. If you're wondering why Leitner didn't call a timeout, remember Duke didn't have any left. They had to go with what they could try to do, and this is what they tried to do. Matt Blunden was the play of the game right there. Henderson is fouled out with 13 points. So we do have a player foul out, but it went all the way down to the seven-second mark. And back to the free throw line will go Bryant Stitt, rookie of the year in the ACC last season. 6'5", sophomore. With seven seconds left in the ball game. He needs them both to show up to Virginia win. He couldn't quite decide if he wanted to stare at that rim the whole time or not look at it. He's missed his last four free throws. This is the big one. He hits this one, and Virginia will upset fourth-ranked Duke. Now, Duke doesn't have any timeouts, so if he hits this one, Duke probably can get it down the court and score within two seconds. Virginia doesn't even have to inbound the ball. Steph has just won the game for the Cavaliers. Seven seconds to go and a four-point lead. And Virginia with a timeout to talk defense. I would assume just medium pressure. Let them take it wherever they want to take it because seven seconds is going to go by in a hurry. Well, at this point, the only way you're going to lose the basketball game is if you foul a three-point shooter three and it goes. Three-point shooter and it goes in, and he goes to the line and ties the game. So Terry Holland, again. It's your package through a London fog. Kessler and Dan Bonner. University Hall in Charlottesville, where the Cavaliers are within seven seconds of pulling the big upset over fourth-ranked Duke. 
Brad, unofficially, we have Duke shooting 34% from the field. Their previous low was 39% from the field. Just can't say enough about the defensive effort of the Virginia Cavaliers. Hurley takes the inbound. Now, they don't even need to get the ball inbound. Late there. They don't even need to get it inbound. Virginia shots number four Duke. Well, now, this game may not be over. This game may not be over. Lenny Wirtz has blown the whistle and called an intentional foul on somebody. I would find it hard to believe that's an intentional foul against Virginia. We'll just have to see what the call is. But Lenny Wirtz has called a foul. Who has he called a foul on? Let's try to unpile everybody. Terry Holland says what? They're trying to get everybody off the court. Who has he called a foul on? This game is not over. There's Leitner with the jump shot. It's going to go in the basket. Now watch the lower part of your screen right there. Well, it's either McCaffrey or Leitner who just goes... Trying to foul Matt Blunt, and that, of course, is the only way that you're going to get the clock stopped. Intentional technical foul. All right, the ball game is over in terms of who has won the game. The only thing in question is the final score. Duke leaving the court. Terry Holland wants to know what's going on. He's not the only one. You know, for heaven's <laughs> sakes, you ought to be able... When you beat a team for the first time in 17 games, to enjoy it, to jump up and down, to celebrate on the court, Terry Holland can do that right at the moment. Everybody's gone. Crotty's going to shoot two free throws. Well, the fans all on their feet as John Crotty will be a solitary performer out there. Do they have the basketball? Where's the ball? He probably stole it to put it in a trophy case after losing 16 in a row. They can't Duke. find the basketball. Give him a plastic cup or something to throw up. Oh, there, there we go. Somebody's up. returned the ball. Somebody just went and got one. They threw the game ball in the crowd, Brad. <laughs> They're looking, trying to get it. Now, how often do you see the referee sending the coach? I love this. He should have let Terry Holland get out of the lane, throw. coach. Get out of the lane. And now Terry Holland able to let his emotions start to flow as Crotty hits the free throw. They just put a dab of icing on this one. The only guys left on the Virginia bench are the coaching staff. Here comes the celebration. It's all over. Final score. Cavaliers of Virginia stunned fourth-ranked Duke. The final, Cavaliers 72, the Blue Devils 69. Finally, the cap is haunted, and Virginia ends a 16-game losing streak to Duke. It's upset night number one and number four of loss. But we're not done. After Sports Center, we'll come back from the Pac-10 with Washington against Cal against California. But Sports Center's up next first. Tom Mees and Dan Patrick, and we'll see you in a few moments' time with our third of three tonight here on ESPN.